Hi everyone, I hope you're doing well and staying healthy uh, during these crazy times. Uh, the, the past week, it's been really mad how uh, things have been escalating and changing really rapidly and who knows how things are going to go over the next weeks and months. Uh, but I'm finally uh, working from home now because it's been a big source of tension over the past week where my, my office uh, building and company didn't want people to work from home even though I do a, a web-based job which is totally online and can totally be done from, from home. And uh, just to sort of follow the guidelines of the government, I wanted to stay home, but they weren't letting me. So, But finally, I'm able to, to stay home, so, so that's all fine. So now I'm working from home from now on, and like a lot of readers, I'm planning what I'm going to be reading over the next weeks and months uh, that I'm going to be stuck inside. And so I don't normally do a TBR pile uh, and talk about that in my video. Videos, but I thought I would do it now just to have a discussion about what we're all reading and, and ask you what you're planning to read over the coming time that we're all stuck inside uh, for this extended amount of time. So yeah, I'm going to talk about all of that. Uh, but you know, I think it's sort of nice in a way. I mean, it's obviously terrible, everything that's going on and that it, I wish it wasn't happening. But I, I feel like for us readers, we find it uh, who are a bit more introverted, at least, you know, I know not all readers are that way, but a lot of them, including me, are quite introverted. And so, you know, it's it's almost nice in a way having lots of uh, plans and uh, sort of parties and things cancelled over the coming weeks that I have a good excuse to just stay inside and do a lot more reading. I mean, obviously, I'd rather all this wasn't happening. But yeah, it's um, I think we are going to find it a lot easier to adjust than some other people who are really social. Like I have some friends who like to just go out to the pub almost every evening and just meet people there and have chats with them and you know and that's totally not me and so we'll find it a big shock to have to just stay inside all of the time now yeah it's going to be a big adjustment for a lot of people whereas I feel like me I'm just going to sort of carry on as I normally do um, even though I do go out sometimes uh, but anyway yeah so I'm going to talk about the books that I'm planning on reading soon um, I just finished reading Till recently I and mean, obviously I've been reading a lot of books for the the Booker International Prize list um, which has come out recently and yeah this was a really great enjoyable historical novel um, so yeah I'm so glad I, I read this and I'm in the middle of reading or I'm more than halfway through reading uh, the other name this Norwegian novel um, which is very existential but also meditative and I'm I'm finding it really relaxing to read during this time because you know there's not a strong plot there's not a lot of peril going on it's just a lot of uh, somebody thinking about all of their their thoughts and their relationship with the world done in this sort of strange way where uh yeah, there's a question of identity being split between two people. And uh, so, yeah, it's quite unique and I'm, I'm really enjoying his writing. So I think I might like to read even more of uh, John Fosse, this Norwegian writer's uh, writing. So, and I do have this other book of short stories called Scenes from a Childhood, um, which I'm thinking maybe I'll read um, not to soon after finishing this because uh, yeah I'd like to I'd be interested to see what other kinds of books he he has written and um, yeah how if he has that same sort of style throughout all of his writing or if it varies a bit um, from fiction to fiction so yeah so I'll read that and then I obviously have all of the other uh, Booker International listed books which I haven't got to yet. I think these are all of them, all the remaining ones which I haven't read and yeah obviously the the shortlist is going to be announced on April 2nd. Don't know if I'll be able to read all of them before that time. Um, so I think probably the ones I want to prioritize next are uh, Samantha Shrublin's novels Little Eyes and uh, I hopefully want to yeah read this fairly soon and fairly quickly um, so I can get on back to reading The Eighth Life, this, this massive tomb, which I feel like I keep building up to it and say like, okay, I'm going to start it soon, but maybe I'll read this other quick, shorter novel first and then I'll finally get to it. It's that whole like negotiation as, as a reader of what I want to get to, but then yeah, I do want to get to this and then dedicate myself to really getting stuck into and finishing this this big epic family story. So yeah, so that's my plan for that of sort of 
personal reading, um, though I, I have started reading aloud to my partner since now we're both home all of the time. So, And I've talked about in the past how I like to read aloud to my partner and something I've been wanting to do uh, before Ali Smith's novel Summer is published this summer, I want to reread uh, the the other books in the seasonal quartet that that she's written. And um, so which I've I've read Autumn and Winter, um, but I've not read Spring yet. So I want to gear myself up to summer by uh, rereading the, the first two books and then finally reading Spring for the first time. So and I thought a really great sort of joint activity to do is to read uh, these books aloud to my partner. So, um, and because Ali Smith's writing is quite fun and has a lot of energy to it, so I think it'll be a good thing to, to read aloud. So I have started reading Autumn aloud to him, and uh, and it wasn't so sure at first because it starts in quite a quirky, odd way. Uh, but um, but then I was like, I, I could see his face sort of being like, oh, and am I really going to want to listen to to all of this? But it, um, after the first section, it, it sort of calms down a bit after about 10 pages and then it gets into sort of the real world again and 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 sort of yeah more recognizable plot line um to to his story so um so yeah so I got to that and he's enjoying it much more and so so yeah I'm rereading um this and uh, I I still have this spiral bound edition for when this first book came out which I want to get a finished copy because it's so beautiful um but I I feel sort of torn because when uh she initially did a, a reading for this when it first came out she she signed this this proof copy for me I didn't know if you'll be able to see because it's so yeah light so yeah and um and she also drew a picture of an, an armadillo on there because um Ali Smith and I like I've known Ali for many years and and we quite frequently talk about animals I've, I've shown this before how and how we we frequently talk about animals and so actually when I moved into this flat a few years ago Ali bought me as a present um a picture of an armadillo um which I've had framed and and keep in the the wall of my library because uh yeah I just think it's it's really cute and and uh, so yeah so I'm a bit torn about I I want to keep this but then obviously if I get a finished copy then it's sort of keep taking up double the space on my shelves and I don't have a huge amount of space on my shelves because I have so many books um so yeah I'm sort of torn about what to do for that but I think I've been told after summer is published all four books are going to be published in one big book together so my plan is that I'll after that comes out I'll get the big four book all together and then I can sort of justify having both of those I don't know in my mind that's 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 going to be acceptable <laughs> of, of working that way so yeah so I'll be rereading aloud um Ali Smith's books uh to my partner so that'll be really lovely and nice but then also I think because I think a lot of us feel quite anxious and stressed um quite uh, uh justifiably I think at this period of time um we want something a bit more relaxing to to read and and not quite as as stressful and um i've been told my partner has told me a great thing to read would be um the the jeeves and worcester novels by pg woodhouse and i've never read any of these books it's one of these quintessential english things that i've never um sort of got into or, or tried or experienced myself but i feel like i should read just to you know feel like I have a better handle on the the culture as a whole um so uh yeah I've never read any of these but um so it, it um these I I think he wrote 11 novels in total that feature Jeeves and um so so there's Worcester who is a wealthy man that lives in London and um yeah has quite a leisurely life and he has a uh what's he called yeah a valet um, as Jeeves because he's not a butler because a butler serves an entire household but a, um, a valet just serves one uh, individual or one master I guess you could say um, so uh, yeah so it's about these episodic adventures between uh, Worcester and his valet Jeeves and Jeeves I think is meant to be a very capable sort of servant and so um, Worcester gets caught in these situations um, where he uh, yeah, is in a sort of sticky situation and Jeeves is able to get it, him out of it because he's very intelligent and capable and uh, they're, they're, most, they're meant to be quite 
funny and light and uh, and sort of portrayed in this idealized world, even though they, they were written, I think, in the early 1900s, I think between sort of 1915 and 1930. And obviously there was a lot of political turbulence during that time, but it sort of avoids um, all of that um, for the most part and just, yeah, has a sort of idealized world of these situations going on. And yeah, and, um, so, um, so yeah, I'm hoping to read some of these as well because I think they would be very entertaining in a sort of form of escapism, which isn't just watching movies. And I mean, obviously I'm watching a lot of movies as well, but, uh, but yeah, um, and a lot of TV. Um, but yeah, it's, it's, it's difficult as a reader, isn't it, during this time because I keep feeling this compulsion that even though I want to sink into these books that I'm reading, I, I have this compulsion to keep looking at the news, even though there's quite often not a lot of new things are happening. But, um, but yeah, I just feel like I need to, because it feels like we're in a big sort of historical thing is happening now. Like the, there's nothing has really happened in modern times like this in the world. So I want to know what's going on. But at the same time, I find it frustrating just watching the news constantly because it just gets really depressing, you know? So, yeah, so I think this will be a good form of escapism from, from all of that. Um, but also, I think it would be good to read some poetry during this time. So I have a number of poetry collections, which I've been meaning to get to for a while. So I have a, I have a group here. And, um, and yeah, so there's Us by Kafar Kunil and a zebra by or zebra if you want to pronounce it the american way by ian humphreys and uh per the perseverance by amen atrobus um which has won multiple awards and is meant to be really um great and uh, this collection called reckless paper birds which was listed for the costa book awards recently and um and by an author i really enjoy so um yeah i want to read more of his work and then there's the 50 minute mermaid which i bought ages and ages ago when matthew sharapa uh, recommended it and he just mentioned it again recently on his channel when he made a video talking about his favorite books and um and uh this is a book of poetry that was written in gaelic and the gaelic is shown on one side of the text but then on the other side of the text is the English translation. So I think that's quite cool to have that sort of pairing. And so I, obviously I don't uh, speak Gaelic, but I, it'll be yeah interesting to see the language on the other side and how that relates to the form and structure of how the English translation works. So so yeah, I'd like to get to some poetry collections as well, um, just because also it's one of my my goals of the year to read more poetry collections. So yeah, so I have all these I want to get to. So that's quite a lot to be getting on with. But obviously, there's the Women's Prize list as well to be reading. So yeah, I have all of that to be getting on with for the next few weeks. And uh, I think that'll keep me busy. Um, so yeah, let me know what you're reading at the moment or what you're planning to read. And uh, yeah, whether you go more for escapism in literature at the moment, or if you, you want to stick to more like, you know, serious books or uh, on on serious literary subjects and, and all of that um yeah so so let me know what kind of reading you've been doing recently and yeah and just how you're doing how you've been coping um let's have a bit of a chat down in the comments below so yeah stay well stay safe stay healthy in, inside and i'll speak to you again soon bye everyone